Had a chance to talk to Corey Cantor from Bloomberg New Energy Finance. He is the Electric Vehicles Associate. I asked him what is in the Inflation Reduction Act for electric vehicles and how will it affect the transition to electrified transportation? Well, I think the fact that EVs were in the act was surprising, yeah. uh, given that there had been a lot of, let's say, uh, back and forth with Senator Manchin's office and uh, and others who were kind of pushing the EV uh, related credits. So if you kind of step back and you look at the U.S. system, we've had a passenger EV credit for about 12, 13 years now. There used to be a hybrid credit. And slowly over time, the credit was kind of losing that effectiveness. The way the system works under the kind of previous policy is you had up to 200,000 uh, cumulative EV sales to use, up to $7,500. Uh, the new policy makes a major change to that, but it ensures it'll be around through 2032. And then you also add a used electric vehicle or used clean car tax credit. Um, everything is kind of being pulled together as a clean car. So that's your battery electric vehicles, your plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, and your fuel cell vehicles kind of together as a cohesive unit. Um, so you got your new car uh, tax credit, used car commercial vehicle tax credit, and then finally an extension uh, of the uh, charging infrastructure, the alternative refueling tax credit. Uh, in addition, you've got a bunch of grants and loan programs in there too. Um, so it's a really massive bill. And I think even when we were kind of talking or uh, with, with folks around, you know, what a package might look like, given that there was so much contentiousness around the transport provisions, I think their inclusion was surprising, um, but there are a lot of strings attached. So it's kind of balancing the fact that you thought they might be left out of a package with the fact that like what automakers are going to have to do uh, in order to have consumers be able to use that, especially that uh, passenger vehicle credit are, are quite stringent. I mean, if you're thinking about the auto industry in the U.S., semiconductor chip shortage has been a major problem. Yeah. Um, the lack of EV certainty has been a, a problem. And so with these two bills taken together, it's a real boost uh, for the domestic uh, U.S. Uh, industry. Um, so, uh, you know, even seeing Ford's statement today from uh, Jim Farley, uh, pleased about the CHIPS Act. Um, there's a lot of industrial policy here, which is what's interesting about these two bills. For a long time, the U.S. wasn't doing that type of work. Not that they weren't, you know, helping the automakers such as uh, back during the 2009 period, but really this is a pretty major uh, infusion of, of capital to, to aid them in kind of reorienting to, uh, towards cleaner vehicles.